Welcome everyone to the Anti-Holic Time Chamber's Top 100 Best Anime of All Time. Here's 90. Number 90, Rave Master. <laughs> it might as well be called Rave Master because Fairy Tales Rave Master with magic. Fairy Tales at number 90 because well, the fights are pretty cool. The magic's innovative, but uh, it's kind of like. Rave Master with magic. <laughs> um, it's really not that impressive. The story is not that the uh, most of the anime episodes are kind of terrible. Now the manga is slightly better, but yeah, I think it belongs to number ninety. Eighty nine. Marvel animes. Scott Summer sucks. The Marvel animes being at number ninety or sorry eighty nine. Uh, they're only on the list because they kind of bridge the gap between East and West with, you know, comic books becoming an anime. It's not because they're good or accurate or fun to watch or animated properly. <laughs> they're just here because what they did for the, I guess, for comic books. I don't foresee any more Marvel animes because they were just, just awful. <laughs> 88! It actually kind of sucks. I mean, it... It kind of introduced the West to like the, the whole harem anime thing. Uh, I, I never really got why everyone except for Ryoko was so in love with him. Like Ryoko had a reason, I guess, but it was just generic. Oh, we all love this one guy who's a loser who also can fight somehow for some reason. Also, we're gods, and we have a cat that turns into a spaceship. I thought it was a great anime series in general. I loved all the characters and everything. I'm kind of sad it's a little low, but I mean, you know, with the story kind of dragging on a little too far and a little too much without gaining too much, uh, it didn't really hit the list as high as we'd hoped, at least. And to be frank, you know, some of the characters kind of, Ayaka kind of sucked in my, in my, you know, my personal preference. I always liked Sasami and Ryoko just because they were so much better in general. You know, if, if you watch the whole series, well, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it, it was just a really great series in my opinion. Of course, some of the people disagree with me. So, yeah, did you wait? 87! Number 87, Kurogane, or Lion Barrels of Iron. Or Iron. It was a... I liked it. It was pretty cool. I liked the uh, different robots. My favorite was High and Kind because it was a... Uh, well, long range, uh, and the series was it was it was interesting. It was it was slightly new, um, but it had something that I really hate in a lot of shonen anime, where everyone hates on the main character for like either being stupid or rash, and then they do stupid crap themselves, but then no one ever says anything about them. I it's, it's like it's the same thing they, they do in Inuyasha, where everyone hates Inuyasha all the time. And I I just kind of I hate that. But the robot designs were pretty cool. The fights were interesting. Uh, the characters were, were kind of cool, and uh, but cool only gets you so far. <laughs> it's not one of those series that leave you thinking about it after you're done. So, eighty-six, number eighty-six, Fate Stay Night. Um, I watched Fate Zero before I watched Fate Stay Night, and uh, I probably shouldn't have because in Fate Zero, Saber was so freaking cool. I mean, like she was a fighter, you know, like. I mean, she was the female version of King Arthur, or King Arthur. I never really got that. I don't know what happened with that. Because she, she had a kid, but was still a male or a girl. I don't know what happened. Point is, she was cool in Fate Zero. Fate Stay Night, she was like a housewife. I mean, she wore a dress the whole time and was just there as the love interest for the main character who, of course, had no magic power of his own or some bullcrap. Um... I didn't really like it. I mean, I like how it connected to Fate Zero because it was like seamless, like it was perfect even though one came way before the other. But the whole series was about Rin and main guy whose name I can't even remember. That's how bad it was. I mean, it was okay, but Saber from Fate Zero was so much better. 85. Number 85, Sailor Moon. Uh. It's magical girls. I'm sorry, that's just not my thing. It's like, why do just random girls get the powers, just wear skirts and go like, hey look, we're powerful, yay, we're important. 
And this guy has a tuxedo, and now he can somehow keep up with us, even though he's a normal guy. And they're all, like, I don't understand it. And, like, love is not that powerful, I'm sorry. You know what's powerful? A giant laser beam. That's powerful. I don't know, I, I, I can't really say too much about this anime, just because it's, again, one of those founding, you know, founding steps of anime that started here in the West, you know? It attracted a lot of girls and guys, too, sometimes. It wasn't anything super amazing. It did start everything here, you know, with the whole magical girl thing and whatnot. Um, but nothing too far after that. 84! Number 84. Gorewa Zombie Deska. Is this a zombie? That's the literal translation of the, of the whole series. Okay, first of all, it's about a zombie, a vampire ninja, a magical girl who uses a, a chainsaw, which is hilarious in my opinion, and a necromancer who does not say a word because otherwise, well, there are severe consequences. It was pretty cool. I mean, the characters were slightly interesting. Um, the one thing I hated was him having to turn into a magical girl to fight. As you've probably heard in my uh, Sailor Moon explanation, I hate magical girls. I wish they had explored him being more of a, a zombie and doing that, but they really didn't. How about this? You're fighting stuff. You're making sure that the world doesn't collapse. Where does it sound familiar? Hmm. Every other anime. So kind of unoriginal in that part. Characters are unique. Story like a little unoriginal. 83. 83. I guess I'm the only one that's talking about this because I really, really like this show only after I played the video game. Initial D. It got the 86 popular. Uh, I, I like the fact with the first season they really elaborated on the story and whatnot and the racing was kind of part of it. But then when it shifted gears to season four, it was all about racing. There was nothing but racing throughout the whole story. All you're doing is just racing other people in their different mountains and different territories. I I'll put it this way, it made the list for sure because of the fact that it spawned a huge, like a huge community with Initial D the game, with the cars itself. Again, no one would have ever known about these different cars and whatnot if it weren't for Initial D. So it's up here, for sure. Why? Because of the fact that it got so many things popular. But it's so low because of the fact that, you know, the story wasn't exactly the best. 82. Okay, number 82, Aihime. Um, I liked it because the powers were cool. The story was the generic, we all have to fight each other, but then at the end, fight with each other for some stupid reason. Uh, one thing I hated about it was it was one of those animes where all the girls do all the fighting. And the guys just kind of sit behind and go, oh no, what's going to happen? And they do picnics and bullcrap. Uh, I mean, it makes, it makes sense that that would happen because they don't have powers and the girls do, but I hate when, it's, when a series has only one gender get the powers. Like, because that doesn't make sense. If there's powers in the world, everyone should have an equal chance of getting it. I mean, it doesn't make sense. But the point is, they had them all. The final villain was this guy who they all had a crush on, and then the guy who they didn't, they didn't have a crush on ended up fighting him with the sword, even though he had no powers, and then some bullcrap happened. All I know is that after that episode, there were some spinoffs. Uh, Myotome and my something else. But it was okay. I mean, I made an AMV to it once, and then it was stolen by Sony. 81. Number 81, Yu-Gi-Oh. Now I know, I already know what you're gonna say, it's too big to be an 81. But think about this, outside of the card game and spawning Yu-Gi-Oh the Abridged, what has it done or achieved of any importance? Enough said. <laughs> I mean, they, they took themselves too seriously. It, it's a card game. You're not gonna make a card game more interesting than a card game. Just like Kirby Kid, I got sucked into the whole thing <laughs> when I was way younger, you know, when Yu-Gi-Oh! just started and at least here in America it started, uh, you know, everyone bought the starter decks and whatnot and people were playing at the schools and the best card was Blue Eyes White Dragon and Summon Skull and sometimes Dark Magician depending on how you played the game. I thought that this would have made it higher again. You know, I, I, I believed it would have been at least, at least 50, 
but we're putting it down here at 81 because of the fact that you know the story was it was pretty good okay I liked it I enjoyed it I hated the first part though where they had to go to Duelist Kingdom of course you know everyone knows about that whole thing and whatnot only because of the fact that they didn't go by the same rules that we had to go through and then of course Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge came about you know making fun of the whole series but it's also on our list because of the fact that the Yu-Gi-Oh! game the card game itself spawned and you know we still have millions of people worldwide playing this game I mean it was the characters were pretty funny I mean like for the world they were in it was pretty good as long as you're talking about the original Yu-Gi-Oh! crew and nothing like like 4Ds or 5Ds was terrible. Uh, I haven't watched Sexel because that sounds retarded. Uh, and the what do you call it? The uh, the one where Jaden was in it because Jaden's just stupid. Like why are you gonna have a? Why would you send your kid to a school where all they learn is how to play a card game? But I did play the card game. It was like crack to me. So for that, it makes it on the list because it kind of pretty much made my entire life because I've been everyone who I, I'm friends with now because of Yu-Gi-Oh. Like me! Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, thanks a lot for sticking around, for waiting so long for the next, uh, you know, set of 10. But we'll get these out right away, as soon as possible. And we'll see you guys next time here on the Andyholic Time Chamber. Good night, everyone.